Well, hello, Story Chasers. This is Amber, and today we're gonna do 10 Minute Tuesday, should we call it that? Last week I did as many questions as possible in 10 minutes and you guys overwhelmingly loved doing that kind of a format. So we're gonna do it again and I think I'll probably put it out every Tuesday. So I don't know, 10 Minute Tuesday sounds kinda cool. We'll do that. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go through the latest comments on my videos and get as many in as possible. So in the future, if you want me to answer your questions like this, put as many questions as you can down in the comments and I will get to them in the following week. All right, 10 minutes up on the clock and let's get started. So the first question is from Faye and she's wanting to know when I stayed in Key West, was that campground a thousand trails campground? The answer is no, it was not. It's actually called Boyd's Campground and is a family owned, privately held campground. Now, you know probably from my other videos that I don't typically like privately owned campgrounds because they pack you in like sardines and this was no exception. However, it was an amazing campground. The people there were phenomenal and I actually had a really good time. So I would highly suggest it and I would definitely go back to it. The next question is from Susan Butler and she's wanting to know if some of the restaurants that were in the Keys or Key West, were they dog friendly? Could you take your dog out there, especially if they had outdoor seating or patio seating? And the answer is yes, you absolutely could. I didn't take Lily to the Lazy Days restaurant where it was actually dog friendly. I left her inside of the van because it was super, super windy that day. Lily does not like the wind. She actually will just sit there and shake and shiver. She gets really cold and she doesn't enjoy it, so I didn't bring her out. Most places that I've gone to where they have patio seating, a lot of times your dogs can definitely go. So I always ask and I always try to find dog friendly restaurants too, especially if Lily's with me and she can be outside and enjoy it too. All right, so the next question is from Sunflowers311 and this person is asking, when taking your home in for vehicle maintenance, do you have any concerns or past experiences with theft? Whether it's for a quick oil change or something that may take a few days. The answer to that is no, I have not had that problem. There's only one time that I had to actually leave my van overnight and I took out like all of my camera equipment, things that were highly valuable to me in case there was theft but I always check everything and I kind of let them see me checking stuff too to make sure things are in their place. I've just never had that issue. It can happen for sure and it's something that I'm always concerned about as well. If it's a quick oil change, I just take things from the interior like front cabin area that they might be able to get like my GoPro or even like my charging cables for my iPhone. I'll take all that stuff in with me too so that way they can't you just grab it really quick and go. The next question is from Diana Avelos and she is asking me, what is that thing that's holding up my camera? It's called a Gorilla Pod. It's made by Joby and you can find the link down in the description box below. Just click on the link that says my Amazon store. So a lot of times when I post affiliate links, if I mention them in the video, I will actually post a separate link for you. But a lot of times if you just see stuff in my videos and you're wondering like, where do I get it? You can probably bet that it's in my Amazon store and there's one link for that. Just go to my store and you'll be able to find everything. The next question is from Ramblin' Van Man and I'm laughing because he wants to know, did I miss the Waffle House in Key Largo? I did. <laughs> I think I might have seen it, but I didn't film it. I still need to go to a Waffle House. It's coming, guys. I swear it's coming. The next question is from Andrea Vitavato. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, she's wanting to know, it's a very interesting question. I've never had this one before, but she basically wants to know, there's a lot of people who are RVing out there and they're doing it full time, but what about someone who has a stationary job and wants to live in an RV? They want to know if that's possible and can she actually finance an RV like that if she's not a nomad? Absolutely you can. The great news is you already have a job and you already have a place to live, I'm assuming right now, so you can go in and finance an RV probably with no issues. Of course, that depends on your credit. Everybody's different, right? But yes, you can do that. In fact, I know several people who do that. They actually live out of their RV in a stationary place so they have a stationary job and they might live in a campground. They might actually just stealth camp all the time too. I know a doctor who actually has a Heimer van and he lives in his Heimer van during the winter time a lot of times on the hospital parking lot because it's so cold. 
he's in Canada. So he would have to go back and forth to his home in very wintry conditions and to combat that, he just bought a van and he plugs in while he's at the hospital. So Andrea, absolutely you can do that. That is a great, great question. And you know, we talk about how this lifestyle is a lot cheaper to live in sometimes for people. At least it was for me and I put my budget together, that free budgeting tool for you guys. It's uh, in the description box of my videos. You can figure out your budget and figure out if this is something that you can afford and if it's going to be cheaper for you than living in a stationary situation. So that's something that you can do too if you want to just keep your stationary job and live in the city and see if this is gonna be a little bit cheaper for you. I have a feeling it probably will depending on the city you live in. If you look at what a van costs, whether you're going to finance it or not finance it, it can be a heck of a lot cheaper than paying for your monthly apartment or a mortgage. The next question is from Kristen. Kristen, I can't pronounce your last name. I'm so sorry. It's T-J-A-D-N. And she's asking, how do you keep from stressing out about not being safe or not staying safe? I don't feel like I'm not being safe. I actually feel very safe. Now in the beginning I felt stressed a little bit and I had a little bit of fear concerning staying out on my own, especially on BLM land and national forest land. But I got over that really by just experiencing it and keep putting myself in that position where I was out boondocking. So that way I could kind of get over that fear. But to be honest with you, when you're out on rural land, there is less people out there, first of all. Sometimes you're just by yourself and you really don't have to worry about people really coming to bother you. There's not a lot of people out there, first of all. These people aren't really going out to rural lands or places like that and looking for that kind of thing to harm someone or, or rob them. It's not to say that something can't happen, so it's always good to you know, kind of check in with your gut when you pull into a place, look around, make sure you feel safe there, make sure there's not, you know, people around maybe that you don't feel comfortable with, and make sure you have kind of a getaway plan if you need to. So I do that pretty much every place I go to. Every time that I go place where I'm going to boondock, I always have two places that I can go to. So if I go to the first one and it doesn't work out, I have a second one to go to and I can just go over there really quick. I've never had an issue where like the second one didn't work either. Point is, is I feel very safe actually. I use my gut a lot. I just make sure that if I'm parking in urban areas, I'm usually parked by light poles. So there's a lot of light on my van. Just, you know, use some smarts about it. The next question is from Karen Cruz and she's asking me, how is my portable freezer that I added? It's an Astro AI freezer. She wants to know how it's holding up with all the heat and humidity. It's actually holding up really, really well. I have it set on two degrees. The most I've ever seen it go up to is four degrees when it was super, super hot in here. I'm absolutely impressed with it, to be honest. So Again, something I highly suggest. If you guys are interested in a portable freezer, it's also in my Amazon store. You can go check that out. Astro AI actually sent me this one for free to try out and see if I was gonna like it. I've had it now for, I think about five months. I have it hooked up to a DC charger. It barely sips power and it's just been really, really great. I haven't had any issues with it. So, so far so good. The next question is from Pearl859. She's asking if I've ever had a mice issue. So I've had a mouse issue twice, one in my class C and one in the van. When I had it in the class C, I think that it came through a side door. It took me two days to get rid of that mouse. I had to get rid of it with a mouse trap and I just put some peanut butter on it and I bought the one that was like the one kill because I didn't want to see the mouse. I didn't want to see him dead. I didn't want to have to deal with a mess, none of that stuff. So I just got the one kill where he's all contained and then I could just throw the whole thing away. The second time around, I actually got it in this van and I think he came through the engine compartment because I was getting some mice in the engine area. And you have to be really, really careful with your engine. This is a side note a little bit. The wiring, unfortunately, the little encasement for the wiring, that plastic stuff, they made it with vegetable oil. This is rampant and in the entire manufacturing industry for cars, RVs, all of them. And mice are attracted to it. So they will eat through those wires and cost you a ton of money if you're not careful and try to prevent them. I spray peppermint oil around. I have little like 
mice deterrent essential oil bags that I'll throw inside that compartment. I have my back door, my side door, and the engine compartment. Now it's only in the engine compartment whenever I'm stationary and I'm not moving around for a while. I also will at night, I'll leave the engine compartment open, the hood open. Mice don't like cold areas and ones that are lit up. So I'll put a light down there. I'll open the hood and that way it's cold and lit and they don't want to stay in there. So that's how I've been able to combat them so far. The one that I had inside the RV, like I said, I think it came through the engine compartment, but he got inside my drawer and made a little bit of a mess inside there. But he was gone within two days. I sprayed some stuff in there and I put some mouse traps in there and I never caught him, but I didn't see him after two days. So I guess he went out on his own. All right, guys, that is it. But that's so much fun. I love being able to answer these questions really quickly and then just take your questions from this last week. I know I did not answer all of them because I just can't even in 10 minutes. Keep your questions coming and I will keep answering them every Tuesday for you guys. This channel is all about story chasing and that is what I'm doing. Most of my videos that I do are travel vlogs and then sometimes I'll intermix these Q and A's and live streams and things like that. My plan this year is to go up the East Coast. I'm in Florida right now. I'll be heading into Georgia soon. And then I'm gonna head over to Michigan after I hit Maine and all the stuff in between and then come back down probably to Tennessee and then back to the West Coast sometime by the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So if you have any really cool, unique places, also leave me a comment about that too because I would love to really check those out as I travel along in my journeys. All right, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video and keep story chasing. Bye.